in this video we are going to set up a server a windows server in azure i gave you a small introduction to azure and how you can enroll for a free trial to practice the current project you don't need an azure infrastructure you can do this in your hyper-v or vmware workstation but i'm going to show you in azure because uh, this will help you to uh, play with azure also you can level up your azure skills also but based upon your convenience you can choose your home lab or microsoft azure environment so what we're going to do here in this is we will create a azure virtual machine that is windows server 2019 then i will introduce you to the minimum details that you need to know about azure vm to complete this project so to create an azure virtual machine we need to log into azure portal that is portal.azure.com so once you log in with your credentials the first thing to check is your subscription so i have multiple subscription in my azure account so if you already enrolled to your trial subscription then from the subscription you will see your subscription name and the cost that you consumed if you click further you will be able to see how much balance exists in your account and based upon that you can manage your usage to create a virtual machine from the search bar you can search for virtual machine services and you will see a create button from the left side and that will take you to a new form and you have to fill this up completely to create your virtual machine so i will explain to you what all these then we will fill up the form to create the virtual machine the first choice that we have is subscription then a resource group under the subscription so once you enrolled to a trial subscription or you already have any kind of uh, subscription that you made then that all will be listed here and you can choose from the drop down list so i have uh, selected visual studio enterprise subscription so you can select your subscription then resource group is all about a, it's like a folder where you can group all the azure virtual machine components and other network components into one resource group so that is uh, for the ease of management So here I have multiple resource group, but for this project, I'm going to create a new resource group so that it will be easy for me to manage all the resources related to this project. So I name it project one active directory demo, then click OK. So this will create a new resource group. You can see that it is noted with a new. Uh, so this means that I'm going to create a new one. Then the virtual machine name here is dc1 that is domain controller one then the region i selected is uae north microsoft have a number of data centers across the world so you can either choose one close to you or you can choose a region uh, which uh, have most of the services that you prefer because not all regions have all the services uh, that you see in Azure. Some regions uh, doesn't have some of the new services. So based upon the region, based upon the service that you require, based upon the data center that closest to you or closest to the customer, you can choose one. So I preferred here UAE North because that is one the closest region for me. Then we have availability options. Availability options give you a redundancy across the uh, zones, across the region, across the uh, data center. For this demo purpose, I'm not going to go for any kind of availability option because this is just for a demo purpose, but in, in, a, in a real environment, uh, you can think about uh, availability option based upon the SLA that you need. Then the next option we have is image. So image is about which uh, operating system that you want to install or which version you want to install so as you offer different operating system like linux or windows red hat so here our choice is of course windows server 2019 because we are going to use a windows feature then size is about the uh, cpu memory and storage configurations that you need for your windows server 
for this demo purpose we only need 2 cpu and 4 gb ram and the default hard disk size but later we will add one hard disk because we need to provide storage file share storage for the users in this organization that is one of the requirement in this project so you can see in the right side the cost per month based upon the size that you choose here the prices will be built at the end of the month so while doing this demo and if you're enrolled to a trial account then you need to be very careful with the cost because you have a very limited amount so you have to dedicate uh, your time to work on this and once you complete either delete it or stop to delocate the machines then give username and uh, password and confirm the password then select inbound port option so as you know this virtual machine is going to run in windows azure so that you don't have a direct physical access to your uh, machines in this case you need a way to or a method to access your machine right and one of the method is to remote desktop and this is a common uh, method that we use uh, to access a machine uh, that is not uh, physically available near to you so the same method we need to access our windows server in the beginning there are other options also microsoft provide but this is one of the common method that we can use so when you do a rdp you do it with 3389 port and this port need to be open in your windows server running in azure so by default as you can see that the inbound port 3389 is open and if you are using this server for web application then you need to make sure that the port 443 or port 80 is open so it is all about the connection that you need to uh, get it uh, inside uh, to to use the service so here the service that we are going to use is a remote desktop and the port for this service is 3389. So now you have two options. You can create the virtual machine from here by simply clicking on the review plus create button. Or you can click next and that will give you the disk options. So the OS disk type is premium SSD in a locally redundant storage then uh, the encryption type is provided so we are not going to change anything then in the networking you can see that it is going to create a new virtual network and the virtual network name is project one ad demo vnet if you want you can create a new one but it is fine for me because i don't have any other virtual machines at this moment or any vnet available so i prefer to go with a new one then the default subnet so this machine will be connected to this subnet and i will have a public ip because i need to access from my home to microsoft azure so i need a public ip that's it then click next so here you can see what are all uh, features enabled related to the management auto shutdown is enabled at 7 pm you can remove this if you want or you can uh, keep it on then you can enable backup you can enable site recovery so i'm not going into the detail i'm just giving an overview of uh, what are all these features then advanced and tag options also provide uh, to select some extensions uh, for post deployment after the configuration and also you can choose uh, the generation of virtual machines now let's click review plus create we covered the necessary basic information that you need to start with microsoft azure so once you click review plus create it will review then give you validation passed then you can click again on the create button that will create a new virtual machine in azure for you with all the configurations that you selected all the way to this point after you click on the create button you will see deployment progress and after a few seconds you will get a new virtual machine in your virtual machine list in the azure portal now from the home page click on the virtual machines and that will list you all the virtual machines that you have here we only created one virtual machine that is dc1 
and you can see the location is UAE North and the public IP is also shown there. If you click further, you will see the virtual machine components, a virtual machine, a public IP, a network security group, then a network card, then disk, then the VNet, virtual network. So these are the resources that somehow connected or owned by this virtual machine. So you can see each component is specified as a resource here. So if you don't want public IP, you can simply remove it. If you want additional network interface, you can add this. So if you open up a server, what you will see, you will see uh, network cards, you will see a uh, disk and you will see CPU. Then after that, you connect with a cable to your network uh, router or switch, whatever it is. So similar to that, you can see all this as resources here and each resource can be added or removed from the virtual machine. So we saw now what is inside a resource group. Now let's go and click on the virtual machine DC1 and that will open up the overview where you can see the operating system, the size, the public IP address. All the details uh, that we configured is reflecting here. Then the status is running which means the virtual machine is ready and running. You can connect to this virtual machine now. Then the private IP address is 10.0.0.4. So if you have other machines uh, in the same network, you can connect with this IP address also. Then click on the networking, you will see uh, inbound port rule and also outbound port rule here. So these are the port opened outside and inside and the list of the ports opened outside and inside. Then if you click on the network card, you will see uh, the IP address, the private IP address and public IP address, the IP configuration here. By clicking on the IP configuration, it will give you an option to, to make this private IP as static one. Now it is dynamic. So if you click on the static button, that will configure this IP address as a static IP address. Then click on the save button because this is going to be an active directory. So prefer to have a static IP address instead of dynamic one. You can also see the uh, public IP address. You can create a new public IP address if you want, then you can associate also. Now go to the DNS server. Then click on the custom. Here you can configure DNS server to point any custom DNS server, you can configure it here instead of what you have in the uh, virtual machine that was automatically configured. And also this is the place you are supposed to configure your DNS configuration for your virtual machine. So you don't need to touch your network interface as you do from the uh, server. You can do your configuration from here and this is the best practice in Azure. From the networking, you can see network security group DC1 NSG. So a network security group is how we control the traffic flow in and out of the services in Azure. Here this is a virtual machine and uh, this virtual machine we are going to use uh, RDP port to connect. So this port need to be opened. Any port from Azure Virtual Machine outside, that means if you try to reach to any machine from Azure Virtual Machine from the to the other network, then these ports are by default open. But if you want to connect to the virtual machine, then you need to make sure the ports are open. For example, you have a website running in, in a virtual machine in Azure, then you need to access it from outside. In that case, you need to make sure the port 443 is open. But if you want to access any website from Azure Virtual Machine, a website outside, running outside, like for example, Google, it run on same port 443, you don't need to open it because outbound ports are by default open. Let us summarize what we have learned in this video. We walk through all the details, necessary details that you require to know when you create a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure. By doing this lab, 
you get a level up your azure knowledge and also your identity access management skills so in the next video we will set up active directory and we will see how to connect to azure virtual machine and how to set up active directory so see you in the next video